everybody, I'm Daniel and I'm an illustrator and this video is going to be the first part in a small series I'm creating teaching you how I paint cities and streets in Photoshop. So this is some of my work here and I often get asked how I go about achieving this graphic look and this is something I want to share in this small video series that I'm creating. So if you've seen any kind of concept art from Into the Spider-Verse, Blue Eye Samurai or paintings from artists such as Mihal Softeruk or Leah Pinto, you might be wondering where to even begin with the style. And I definitely think when approaching any kind of landscape that's set in an urban environment, it can get very overwhelming very fast. And it's mostly due to the sheer number of details that you have to include. But a huge fundamental aspect of this style is learning to create very, very clean shapes and sticking with them. And I strongly believe that if you have this fundamental skill down, that you'll be able to approach any kind of painting challenge and overcome it with ease. Now, this video isn't going to be jumping straight into the sexy painting process of streets and everything like that. Um, instead, I want to take it a step further. So this video specifically will take a look at how I use different tools in Photoshop to go about my graphic style. Specifically, we're going to be looking at how I use the lasso tool, the elliptical and rectangular marquee tool, the pen tool, and then sort of combining all of these things together. And yes, there will be homework as well, so you can actually apply what I'm teaching you into your own projects, but stay tuned to the end for that. Okay, with all that out of the way, uh, we're going to jump straight into Photoshop now and I'm going to be demoing how I use these tools. And yes, I will be using Photoshop, but you can apply this in any kind of painting software you choose. The theory remains the same, but the shortcuts might be slightly different, so I'd encourage you to look up the equivalents if you can. Now, the first tool I want to look at is the lasso tool. And the lasso tool is something that I use primarily 90% of the time now when I'm painting. Um, it's a very strong tool to create clean shapes, very bold shapes as well. And to activate it in Photoshop, go ahead and press L on your keyboard. So once you have the lasso tool selected, as soon as I start drawing on the canvas, you can see it's making selections very, very quickly like this. To move any of the selections, I can simply just drag like this and it'll move things around. And then to deselect it, I press Ctrl D, right? So those are the fundamentals. So to go ahead and add to the selection, what we can do is press and hold shift and then continue to draw. And Photoshop will just continue adding to our selection just like this. Um, because as soon as we start to draw outside, you can see it removes that selection and creates a new one. Now, for me personally, I don't necessarily like this method. Um, instead, what I'm going to do is come up to the top left here and select the second option of the two boxes intersecting. Now, basically what will happen is as soon as I draw anywhere on the canvas, Photoshop will automatically recognize that I'm drawing and add to our selections. It just makes things a little bit more convenient. The fundamental aspect of graphic reduction is creating shapes such as this and then pressing alt backspace to fill it in and then control D and now you have a shape. And then going forward from here, what I would do is create a clipping mask on top and then paint within it. But I'm sort of jumping a little bit ahead. I will be explaining specifically this step in the next video. So using the lasso tool is all well and good, but if we have to create all of our shapes freehand like this, it's going to be really, really hard to draw a straight line. So even if I'm trying to draw a rectangle here, you know, you can see that everything's, it's not where it needs to be. So to create straight lines using the lasso tool, what I'm going to do is tap on the screen with my pen, press and hold alt. And then now I can, while still holding alt, move this around and then go ahead and tap different anchor points to create a clean shape such as this. I use this specific method all the time for creating buildings or windows or just fine tuning things as well. Um, and this is a very, very, very important part of my painting process. The cool thing is once we have our shape as well, we're not just bound to what we've drawn because if we press control T, you can see that I can start to move this and scale it around and I have just a little bit more control. But again, I'm going to show you specifically more of this stuff in the next video. Okay, so while that's all good, how do we remove parts of our selection? If I'm just drawing freehand again and without pressing shift, you know, I'm just adding into our selection. If we want to remove any parts of it, all we have to do is hold Alt and then you'll see on our icon that little minus sign down at the bottom. That means now that whenever we draw, we're going to be subtracting elements of our selection. And you can even go ahead and draw holes and things and make it look like Swiss cheese if you wanted to. Now by pressing Alt Backspace, you can see that I can move this around and it's still going to have those bits and pieces. Okay, and so that was just removing parts of your selection using the freehand tool. But what happens if we try to remove things? Because once again, if I press Alt, it's not going to come up with that straight line thing. It is going to remove the selection, but I'm going to have to draw it freehand. 
Well, there's a way of doing that, and it's a little bit complicated. Um, what I'm going to do is press Alt, so it comes up with that minus symbol, tap on the screen, let go of Alt, press Alt again, and now I have this anchor point. Um, it seems very complicated, but trust me, after some practice, it'll just happen automatically, and you won't even be thinking about this sort of stuff. But once I have this, I can go ahead and draw that shape that we wanted. And you can see it's going to remove part of the selection uh, in Photoshop. And then now again, once I alt backspace, now I have this U shape. So I definitely would um, encourage you to experiment creating shapes using the lasso tool. You know, just creating very, very organic ones freehand sort of like this. And then you can go ahead and press shift, press alt, and uh, go ahead and add selections outside of your range as well. If I wanted a bridge connecting these two shapes, for example, I can press shift, press alt, and then while holding alt, go ahead and create something like this as well. As far as removing selections go, you can do it the way that I just taught you. Me personally, the way that I like to do it is I'll go ahead and fill my selection. So I have my shape like this, and then using the lasso tool, go ahead and draw things and literally just press backspace or delete to get rid of it. Um, I just find it a lot easier and it also doesn't mean that I have to nail the shape on the very, very first try. I can create my shape and then using these methods that I just taught you, get rid of things. A very cool application of this graphic style using the lasso tool is something like foliage. So for example, if I go ahead and just find a nice textured brush, so something like this one, you can see that I've created this cloud looking shape here and literally what I would do is pick a green and go ahead and just like paint within it like this. Very, very simple. Or I might even pick a rake brush and then start to carve it in. And because we have the initial shape to begin with sort of masking where we want all of our lines to go, as soon as I press Control Z, now we have this interesting kind of foliage shape. Something like this, it's, which is very, very common. And then from there, you can go ahead and carve things out further if you need to as well. But that's a very fast application of how to use the lasso tool in painting. Now, the second set of selection tools I want to cover is the marquee tools. So they're found right up on the top left hand side, just underneath the, um, the move tool, which is over here. And the marquee tools are just at the bottom. So if you click and hold, it's going to bring up all of these different options here. Um, let's go ahead and use the rectangular marquee tool first. So again, if you click and drag, it's going to come up with a selection. And you'll notice at the top left, we have the exact same functions as we do with the lasso. So if I choose the second one and I start drawing, it's going to add to our selections. If I go ahead and choose the third one. Now, if I draw, it's going to remove our selections as well. So that might also be a easier way of controlling everything. Now you can create very, very clean graphic shapes like this. The shortcut for the marquee tool is M on your keyboard. And then if you go ahead and drag, you can create rectangular shapes such as this. If you wanted to create a perfect square, it's very simple. All you have to do is click and drag. And as you're dragging, press and hold shift and Photoshop's going to lock the dimensions together. So you can create very, very easy shapes such as this one here. And say I wanted another square to remove it. I can start dragging, press and hold shift. And then have the selection inside. Now you'll notice at the very, very bottom, it's not the exact same as the top. So what I can do is just move my selection using the arrow keys and then press delete like that and say that's just a, a window frame or something. We also do have the elliptical marquee tool. And again, this is very straightforward. We're going to make ellipses or if we hold shift, we're going to make a perfect circle. So for example, if I just go ahead and create shapes something like this, uh, it could be the start of a tree, for instance. Don't forget that whatever selection you create, you can just press Ctrl T to transform and then start to move it around as well. So that's a very handy tip. Okay, and finally, the last tool we're going to take a look at is the pen tool. Um, the pen tool is probably the trickiest and the hardest to learn out of all the tools here, just because the learning skill is a little bit higher, but I'll explain how I use it here. To activate the pen tool in Photoshop, press P on your keyboard. And as soon as I start drawing, you can see that it's kind of like the lasso tool. If I just tap anywhere on the screen, it's going to create all of these shapes here. And once I have this path selected and my shape completed, I'm going to right click and then choose make selection. You're going to get this little pop up here. 
Um, you don't need to worry about any of this stuff. I keep the feather radius at zero because I want the shapes to be very, very hard. And once I press OK, we have our selection. But I specifically use the pen tool not to do that because I just use the lasso tool. Instead, I would use it to create very, very nice clean curves in your art. So the way to do that is if I tap on the screen up here at the top, I'm going to tap somewhere at the bottom. So we're making an L shape here. And while I'm having this selected, I'm going to hold and drag across. And you can see it starts to bring up this bezier curve. So by moving this around, you can see that we're starting to create a nice curve on the left hand side. And then to go ahead and edit those curves, I can press control and start to move them around. While you're holding control, if you press and hold shift, you can snap them at 45 degree increments here, which makes things very, very handy. So once I have that selected, I'm going to tap up here again and then let go. So now that we have this U shape. By pressing control, you can start to see that both of the Bezier curves are interacting with each other. And again, if I hold control and press shift, we're going to snap these in different increments. It's a little tricky and it is gonna take some practice to get used to the, uh, the pen tool, but that's okay because as long as we keep trying, then we will improve. If I wanted to finish this shape here at the top, I can simply tap it um, between these two points and then it's gonna create this, this U shape here. And then once again, right click, make selection, okay, and then backspace. And now I can move this around. I have this shape here. Okay, but what if I wanted to make a shape kind of like this? I'm just gonna draw it out first. What if I wanted to make a shape sort of like this? Uh, using the pen tool, we want to minimize the amount of anchors that we place on anything because the more anchors you have, the more busier curves you will have and the less clean the actual shape will look. So I'm just gonna go ahead and demo this really, really quickly. The way that I would start creating a shape like this using the pen tool is I would make an anchor point right here, down on the bottom left. Then I would come up to the top, click and drag. So it sort of covers that first half of the, um, of the curve. And then I'm gonna place another anchor point on this side. Now, as soon as you can see that I place it down, it sort of overshot where I wanted it to. What I'm going to do is press and hold control here, select this point and pull that handle in. So it sort of maintains that shape a little bit more. So once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and tap on another point here. Tap on this point, go ahead and pull out those curves. And then at the bottom, go ahead and tap so we have that curve again. Once again, I'm going to hold control, pull that handle in and then finish off the shape here. Right click, make selection. Boom. Now we have this shape that we created using the pen tool. Now in your pen tool, if you are having trouble creating shapes, so for example, say you create a curve like this, and then you want this to be a straight line. If I tap down, you can see that Photoshop automatically creates it as another curve. So the way to get around that is pressing and holding alt, and then you're going to get this little arrow here. And as soon as I click and drag, you can see that it breaks the other handle on the other side. If I didn't do that, it's going to make both of them interact. So as soon as I press Alt, it'll break that anchor point, and now we can create that clean, um, that clean shape here on the other side. By the way, at any point, if I'm going a little bit too fast, just let me know down in the comments below and I'll get back to you. Okay, so now that we've taken a look at how to use all of these basic tools, um, I don't think it's enough just to watch the video and not practice what we've learned. So what I've done is I've gone a step further and I've created these four different worksheets that you can download for free on my Gumroad. And so this is intended to be used as practice afterwards. And all you have to do is in each worksheet, I've created a bunch of shapes here using my tool of choice. Basically what I want you to do is go ahead with each of these shapes and use the lasso tool or the pen tool and create exactly what's here just to get a feel for how to use these different tools. And I'm just gonna do a couple of demos here just to get you to understand how I want you to do this. So for example, in the first shape that we have here, again, I'm gonna press L on my keyboard to bring up my lasso tool. And I can already see that all of this is very hard geometric shapes. There's nothing free form here, which is cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap on my screen here and then press Alt. And now I'm gonna have this anchor point. And all I'm gonna do is just simply go ahead and tap each corner of the shape just like this. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect um, in your examples, but as long as you're getting the hang of it, that's all I really care about. So as soon as you have the shape here, go ahead and press Alt Backspace to fill it in. And then you can see the, uh, the shape that you've created. Now, for example, for this second shape, so I'm gonna do the exact same thing. 
go ahead and press Alt and then start drawing where I want all of my corners to be. And this is the important thing about graphic reduction. So as soon as I get to this point here, I could go ahead and just trace it like this. And then while I'm still holding Alt, create that shape. That's totally fine. But another thing that we can do is if I go ahead and just draw the shape again, just like this. As soon as I get to this point, I'm going to overshoot um, all the way up to the second corner and then finish the shape. Now that I have my shape selected, I can press and hold Alt and then come in here and actually just carve this out. Both ways are fine. Both ways work. There is no right or wrong answer. But the main thing is when you practice with these tools enough, you will start to have your own intuitive way of doing things and achieving the same outcome, basically. Whether or not you like to go in and physically carve things out or create the shape first and then remove things, it's really up to you. At the end of the day, what matters is creating great art, but the way that we apply things here is also important. But I think specifically the main thing I want you to take away is that you don't have to create the shapes perfectly in your first go. You can go ahead and start to remove things and refine things as you go along. Um, the cool thing about graphic reduction is that you build upon what you've already created, if that makes sense. Okay, thank you so much for watching this video. In part two of the series, what we're going to be doing is painting a still life that I've created in Blender using all of the tools that we learned today. So stay tuned for that. That's going to be dropping in the next week or so. And if you like this kind of content, hit like and let me know down in the comments below so that more people can see this. Good luck with everything. And if you have any questions, again, just let me know and I'll get back to you. And until next time, everybody, take care and stay safe. Thank you.